Browns getting ready for the Steelers here on a Thursday. They play Monday Night Football at Akershire Stadium in Pittsburgh. And the big story, Mary Kay, this week is Dewan Jones. He'll be getting his first career start, and it's going to be to come against one of the best pass rushers in the game in TJ Watt. Now, Kevin Stefanski kind of downplayed that one on one matchup. We won't. That's the matchup everyone's watching. It really is. And it should be noted that TJ Watt had three sacks in the opener against the San Francisco 49ers. So he is off to a rousing start. You know he's going to be champing at the bit to start against a rookie making his first NFL start. But he also must realize he is going up against a man who is a hundred pounds heavier than him. So he's going to have to use his bend, his quickness, his agility to get past DeWan. Yeah, DeWan is a large man, Ashley. That is 100% true. But TJ Watt is, again, one of the best pass rushers in football. I don't think we're going to necessarily learn a lot about DeWan Jones, but this is still a matchup that really could decide this football game. I think so because, you know, each of the last two years when the Browns have played the Steelers at Akershire Stadium, they've done so without Jack Conklin and had to throw James Hudson in there in the past. And really, Watt just kind of beat up on him in both of those games, especially the 2021 game. But it's been a tough going, I think, when that offensive line has been shorthanded against these Steelers. So, like you said, Dan, even though they don't want to talk too much about any single one-on-one -on -one matchup, this is the one it feels like to watch. Now, of course, another thing to keep an eye on is Deshaun Watson. He is going into Pittsburgh. Uh, really, look, he started a game there last year at the end of the year. That one kind of feels like it doesn't count, Mary Kay. This is the one right here. Monday Night Football against the Steelers. A chance to get the Browns to 2-0 and for the first time since before they left, going back to 1993. This is a huge moment for Deshaun Watson. It really is a huge moment. He's trying to establish himself as being able to own the AFC North. This is a game you've got to win. Again, it's on Monday Night Football. So much at stake. That chance, as you mentioned, to go to 2-0. and They've got the bye week coming up in week five before that they're going to meet all three of their AFC North foes and he really wants to sort of plant his flag in this division but we know we know those Steelers are going to be loaded for bear they're mad about what happened in their first week a 37 loss to the San Francisco 49ers and they're going to be coming after Deshaun. Yeah, Ashley, this could either be Deshaun Watson's coming out party as the Cleveland Browns starting quarterback, or it could be the Steelers sending a message to Deshaun Watson about how just, just how difficult this is going to be for him. Yeah, I mean, I think you can't, I guess, understate how important it is the fact that the Steelers just went out there and got their butts kicked against the 49ers last week. I know Mike Tomlin talked about that as well, that they kind of have to wear that loss. So I think that's certainly an element. But yeah, it just feels like this is the first time we're going to see Deshaun Watson in this kind of primetime matchup. And when you have who's supposed to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league, ideally, those are the kind of guys that succeed in those kind of games. Now, of course, no Deontay Johnson, no Cam Hayward for the Steelers. That's big. On the Browns' side, Mary Kay, Juan Thornhill did not practice today. Kevin Stefanski called him day-to-day. -day. But still, even though the Browns won a game without Juan, it would it would be best to have him out there. And, of course, the Steelers, uh, they're missing two very important players. Yeah, you know what? They they want their full complement of guys there in that back end. Juan Thornhill was such a huge uh, part of their defense this whole entire preseason and offseason. And, you know, he's he's a key piece for them. He was one of the biggest acquisitions that, that they made in the offseason. They definitely would like to have him back. Yeah, and Ashley, again, with the, with the Steelers not having those two guys, if the Browns don't have Juan Thornhill, obviously that's a big loss. But it just changes what the Steelers can do defensively. And, Look, we all love Rodney McLeod, but you want Juan back there. Yeah, I mean, I think Juan is the guy and has quickly stepped up. I think with Rodney McLeod, though, you are in probably as best of a position as you can be in if you're the Browns, just because he is one of those Jim Schwartz guys. He really knows this defense. But all I keep thinking is, thank goodness they listened to us when we did our 53-man roster projection and kept five safeties in that room because that was something I know we were advocating for. Yeah, we did see Ronnie Hickman on the field for a few plays on Sunday against the Bengals, so uh, it was good to see him out there. Okay, we'll cover everything that happened here in Berea, everything leading up to the game, of course, all at cleveland.com slash browns.